Coming up next on All About Android, it's me, Jason Howell, my co-hosts, Ron Richards, Wen Tui Dao, and Florence Ion. That's right, all four of us in the same place at the same time, virtually, mostly. Anyways, jam-packed show. Flow actually goes hands-on with four devices, the OnePlus 10 Pro, the Motorola Edge Plus, the Xiaomi 12 Pro, and the Samsung Galaxy A53. And then we have a whole lot of other stuff to talk about. Maybe a pixel tracker on the horizon, a Google solution for dual eSIMs. Uh, Ron's really excited about messages, categories. There's a whole lot of other Google app updates, your email, and a whole lot more next, coming up next on All About Android. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. Hello, welcome to All About Android. This is episode 572, recorded on Tuesday, April 5th, 2022. Your weekly source of the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Owl. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Huynh Thuệ Dao. And there we go. I'm Florence Ion. Oh, yeah. See? Hooray. Okay, so on this episode, we are proving that Wynn and Flo are not the same person, just disguised was, as different people because they're never there on were some the same concerns. time. There were. There were some concerns. There yeah. were. And and so now we're dispelling the myth. <laughs> and by no means is one of them actually an AI construct that's been programmed by the other. So yeah, they're both real people. Don't so, look too yeah. closely. You might you might notice that certain hair strands suddenly disappear. You might notice that on one ear there's an earring and on the other ear there's not. <laughs> the background is strangely blurred. You know, all these things that, that deep fakes do. Uh, you won't actually <laughs> notice that. When, I, I do appreciate. Oh, <laughs> oh, look look at our backgrounds when you reverse yeah. them. They're kind of yeah. the same. <laughs> and I do have here true. off camera, I have my yeah. Android uh, statues here off camera behind my keyboards. Yeah. So you yep. won't, yeah. There it is. I, mm, I also have several I like your styling. off screen, so. Yes, <laughs> I like your styling. That's nice. Nice. It's good to have the Ooh, whole great. gang together. I like this. I like That's all right. four of us. Now, yeah. the next awesome. step, it's not too much to ask. The next step, we all have to get around this round table at some point. That would yes. be amazing. I don't know when that's going to happen. It will take some planning, but I, yeah. I firmly believe it can happen. So uh, can We happen. have to plan this the only way that people can plan anything uh, in their 30s and beyond, which is to send a Google Cal invite three months ahead of time. <laughs> 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 no, I'm going to send you all a Calendly link. A Calendly. Calendly. Did I say that right? Calendly oh, link. Find, find a slot or, in the calendar. Here, click this link. Yes. It's like, oh, God, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> hey. or, or, Jason, you could use the new Google Workspace feature. Yeah, that's true. Ask people, you know, when they are available in their Google calendars. Thanks so. for keeping a Google around here. You're right. There is a, there is a new Google feature that basically. What do I live and breathe? Yeah. I live and breathe Google, but also, hold on. Let me tell you what they're also making me do at Gizmodo, okay? Hold uh -huh. on one second. Okay, ready. Brace oh. yourselves. I think I know what's coming. They oh. made me da, take da, one of these. Da. Oh, no. It's a fruity phone. Yeah, no. that's okay. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with this phone. I'm actually... With this phone. <sighs> with this phone. <laughs> with the iPhone. I know. It's, it's the iPhone. There's... There's nothing else in its camp that competes with it, but I am um, excited to kind of be back on this phone beat and wielding all these different devices and, and holy nerdy moly. about how their oh, wide angle is and what the battery life is like and... I mean, no. we today's episode of this show that you're listening and watching all about Android is kind of the epitome of that, too, because a little bit later, our hardware block is basically all, all flow because, <laughs> holy cow, when I went to your Gizmodo profile <laughs> and checked out how much you're writing, you're writing a ton of articles these days. They've got you busy. But not only that, you're also reviewing a lot of devices. So we're going to hear from you on a few of those devices today. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's just say there's a lot of Android phones, guys. It's still. Yeah, there is still. You know? <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot, like, it feels like there's a lot based on, you know, when you get on that kind of like reviewer beat and, you know, one phone comes in, you review it, the next one. Meanwhile, we what did we, uh, when Ron, I, I don't know if either of you remember the number from like a couple of months ago, there was some news story where they said just in the last year alone, there was something like 2,000 Android phones or something released. I, I can't remember what the number was, but oh we God. are only seeing like a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction. You, you know what? It was funny that you say that because literally last night I was uh, filing a support ticket with the uh, mobile game provider of the only game I play on my phone because the game stopped working after the latest Android 12 update. Um what Spoiler, game? I had to I had to uninstall and reinstall the game and then it worked fine. But in their form where it's like it's like what uh, what platform are you on? I choose Android. It's like what device? And I hit the drop down menu and I got a drop down <laughs> menu that was longer than like picking your country and it was every com and I'm going oh through God, it and no. it was like every company of phone that I, I can ever and like I want to find it now because it's uh, it was fascinating because I, there was like companies that I've never even <laughs> heard of on this listing under Android um, where I'm trying to see here. It's like Let you need a nested can... menu or something yeah, like that. Yeah, like it, it was unbelievable. Well, let me see if I can recreate this. And, and even even with a nested address. menu, by the way, that thing that list would be huge. Like mm -hmm. the amount of manufacturers alone is gigantic. And then you open those up and then you yeah. get all of their models, you know. So here we go. Platform, Android, smartphones, and tablets, right? And then it, um, then where is it? Uh... So start from the top of the list and read every device that's there. <laughs> we, oh, not, we that'll be today's that. episode. <laughs> Reading that's the annoying. list of phones. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was just, it was a ridiculous list. And I just could like literally companies I've never even heard of. I'm like, uh, talk about fragmentation. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I suppose in a support ticket, like there's probably a, like going too far as far as serving everybody. But I mean, where do you even draw that line? I don't know. You know, where oh, do you say while, while, your phone is not important, but yours is while we're, while we're talking about just things in general and nothing to do with the show. I forgot to mention if you're on T-Mobile, uh, T-Mobile Tuesday, starting this week, all through the next week, this is the annual get MLB TV for free because you, you're a T-Mobile customer. So that's my annual message oh. for you. If you like baseball, you want free access to MLB.tv, it's like $130 a year. You get it for free if you're a T-Mobile customer this week only. Make sure you go redeem it. So there's a, So you there's redeem my, it uh, and you get just just this week for free. Yeah, yeah. So for the next okay. six days, there's a promotion nice. where you can redeem an offer to get free subscription to MLB.tv. Ah, so, right on. Yeah. That's a good tip. It's Thank God so much so that I, I texted my friend. I'm like, hey, are you still on T-Mobile? And he's like, yeah, free MLB day today. And I was like, yeah. It's, oh, like, wow. it's, the, it's the thing that we all do every year. I, but, for, uh, I forgot about T-Mobile Tuesdays. I mean, I haven't been on cool. T-Mobile in a while. But yeah, still it's still kicking. It. I always thought that that was going to be one of those things that they... Uh, Oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, there's an earthquake. Uh, that was going to be one of those things that they started as a promotion and then, you know, ended up disappearing after like a few months. But it's <laughs> it's going. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. This the the MTV Handycam moment that we yeah, were just no, having. We're, this kind is of real hoping world. you would lean into it. But <laughs> yeah, this is real world uh, Petaluma. <laughs> is what you're watching, actually. Uh, love you, Burke. Okay. Uh, here, here it is. Okay, I found it. I found it. Oh, you here found is it? the drop down. All right, sorry, I found it. So if you do sub-issue, <laughs> where is it? Download installation issue, um, crash freeze loading, sub-issues, game crashes at start, manufacturer, and there is a list of two boom, 360 mobiles, what? 360 OS, seven mobile, Two boom. A wow. A Ababra. Oh, you're Accent. not even Alcatel. Uh, Alcatel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Afrasel, which I guess is Africa, right? Like all the, the, this list is like uh, I I cannot believe how many. I wish I could share my screen. It's wow. like it goes on and on. Logicom, Long Cheer, Lawn Walk, Lumagon, L L L LV Mobile, <laughs> Knock Speed, Magnus. Like I'm Dang. just scrolling yeah, through. Yeah, I've not heard of yeah. so many of these. Safram, Safaricom. Runbo, Rug Gear, Roy Queen, Rover Pad. These are just words. And these <laughs> yes. are all manufacturers <laughs> yes. of devices that they run all, Android. 
They all start to oh kind of goodness. merge into each other and sound like Vanz- the same word. Vanza Vanza Tech V A N Z A T E K, right? And then like and mixed in there, it's like Vanza Tech Vava Venera Verizon. Right? Oh, <laughs> just like wait so a minute, right, that's Verizon one. Has Vava. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they'll do like the branded cheapy yeah. phones, yeah. and they'll be like, "Here's yeah. a Verizon Android." West, phone. Westinghouse, WikiPad, so, Wico. So our joking, mm-hmm. we were not too far off. It sounds like they really tried to get every single. Uh, no, I, this list, like, it. I w- it, it's a drop down. I wish I could pull it out somehow. ZTE, yeah. like uh, I'm like it's. Oh, uh, what is? Oh wait, I want to see if they have on and on and on. Alt F. Alt Oh, of course they have on and on and on and on on there. How could I, how can I, what, what was that, Burke? Oh, Burke was Burke? just saying that if you Alt really want to share it, it's called a, sh- a screenshot. That's what. Oh, no, oh wait, Alt you're on a Mac. Screen. No, it's a drop down too. So I can't, um, <laughs> I can't screen, I can't screenshot a drop down. It's all right. We'll take um, your word for it. Oppo. Oh, yeah. And yet, and yet, on and, yeah. oh yeah, there's on and on. Uh, O-N-N, yeah, there it is. Orange. Hmm. This is crazy. So anyway, so there it is. So yeah. So there are a lot of manufacturers out there. Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Long story short, there's lots of people that make uh, Android yeah. phones. All right. Well, I think it's time to actually talk about newsy things and hardware-y things and appy things and then eventually feedbacky things. But we're going to start with the newsy things right now with the news. I think we're going to need a really long drop-down menu to what? what's wrong with what? this show. <laughs> what? What? Oh, Wait, why? Burke, what's different what? with the show? Burke, your your voice sounds much different. <laughs> what? I don't understand. Oh, actually, I do. Do I need to start complaining about something else? <laughs> oh, <laughs> actually, oh, I do know because Ver, uh, Victor is back here in the studio. <laughs> wow. Ta-da. That's my boy, Victor. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right, I'm giving it back to Burke. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, Victor this gets the mic This is why I miss the on. studio. This is why you miss the studio. Because yeah. anything can happen, yeah. truly. Yeah. So. I, I, w- I will admit, I was acting. I knew all along. Oh, Jason. You all were being surprised. Ha. Jason, uh, did you know about the uh, new Bluetooth tracker in Android uh, that might be coming on Google? Well, yes. Because yeah, I, you I did put the it in the rundown. Yeah. So, our first news story is uh, poses the question: Could there be a Pixel Tag device in Google's future? Hmm. Uh, Nine to five, Google did an APK insight into the Google app and found code that seems to point to tracker detection being built into Android. Uh, and if, uh, as we all know, this follows Apple's Tracker Detect app for Air Tag Air Tag tracking and Tiles app uh, launched last month. Uh, not a lot more info than this at the time, uh, but could this be something we hear about at I/O? Mm-hmm. Maybe. As we start speculating about I.O., um, I would not be surprised if they do a tracker flow. What do you think? Is, would, would this surprise you? You know what I think and what I hope Google does is they come out with a tracker and then they explain how safe it is so that nobody can uh, track you unwillingly mm-hmm. uh, against your then, own, you know, because of all the, the um, you know, bad press. Bad news, so yeah. Bad news. It's not even just bad press. It's just really bad firsthand accounts of how people have been using Apple Air Tags in a really nefarious way. And then I guess there's been, you know, people have been talking about like Tile and a couple other, uh, you know, like putting an earbud in your car so you can track a person. I think that was another story that came out recently. Oh, so I would love mm. to see Google uh, address this and say like, this is, you know, this is something you don't have to worry about. And I also think it's just in response to the fact that Apple did it and Android yeah. needs to have a native way to be able to track, to be able to tell that there's something in your car tracking you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is is there a way to do this that it that doesn't end up, you know, going into the being realm creepy. of like, yeah, being creepy? Like, it just kind of seems like the tracker devices, like how, how does one actually, like a business like Google or Apple or whoever, you know, wants to release a tracker, how can any of them put out a device that, tracks location of things but doesn't track like people or whatever isn't used in these ways like i guess i don't know i guess i don't i don't understand how you have both those things at once you can't have your cake and eat it too and track it also (laughs) you can't have your cake and track it too there's the joke there you go I, i do pay for a gps tracker for my kid yeah and but I guess if somebody were there, to put that in a car, nobody would know that that was in there with them. 
You know what I mean? Totally. Well, yeah, and I think that's that's it. Like there there are use cases of tracking technology for people that do make sense, right? Like if if you have a small child or you have a a kid that has a phone, like that's that's touted as a feature and it kind of makes right. sense that a parent would want to know where their child is or at least have the ability to do that. It's the placing the tracker in the X girlfriend's car mm -hmm. to, you know, track where she's going or even, you know, even you know, that's creepy enough, but plenty of other creepy directions. But I don't know from a developer standpoint, like when do, do you, from your perspective, like agree, like, is there a way to do this responsibly? I don't know. This is like the opposite of like the high tide lifts off boats. The slippery slope makes everybody trip up in the end. So I, I generally, I, I just don't like, I just really don't like this. I think when you open a door, people are going to go through it for worse, for better, for yeah. worse. And this is just, yep. yeah, just, just seeing how many people are able to game the system in bad ways just makes me like, it just squeaks me out. Just, it squeaks me out. Cause like, I really do like technology. I like the possibilities of things. And yeah, I do agree there's good use cases, but if someone can do something, they're going to do it. Yeah, so, and I, totally. it, it feels like this is the kind of thing where, you know, I, as people, like if you, if you are like, this is just like the same thing as like, you know, automated ways of detecting bad intent are really hard. I just feel like this is just mm -hmm. one of those things where it would be really difficult for a automated like automatic way that to to be perfectly able to catch bad intentions. Like you maybe like there's there's ways of like tracking like bad patterns of behavior and bad usage, but yeah. Then the couple yeah, then a couple few people get hurt and then we're just like Jesus is awful. So no, I, <laughs> undo, I, undo. I, I, undo. Yeah. I mean, like if anything, I know what developers are like and you know, we, we try to be careful and some of us are not that careful. So yeah. yeah, don't trust us with this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm like, I'm actually like kind of serious about this. Like don't trust us with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh -uh. That sort of thing can go bad quickly. And there, there's always mm -hmm. someone out there that's willing to take it there too. So yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, well, moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, in, <laughs> well, in terms of like added functionality that, that people might use for kind of more less nefarious uh, purposes, there's actually a, a really interesting uh, Google patent solution to the problem. Uh, well, not the problem, but the limitation of eSIM. So basically, you know, eSIMs have been really awesome. Uh, I've had one in my phone for several years and I love it. But, yeah. you know, the eSIMs are basically embedded SIM cards. And there's one kind of big limitation of them. And that's basically based on the original spec is that Basically, you can only have, despite the fact that you can have many different SIM profiles on, the, on a single eSIM, only one can be active at a time. So if you're the kind of person that really loves dual SIM technology, you've had to rely on a phone having either two eSIMs or an eSIM and like a physical SIM or two physical SIM, just any of these kind of kind of uh, uh, double, double SIM holster type phones. But with a Google patented solution called multiple enabled profiles, Maybe very soon coming in Android 13, you could have a phone with a single eSIM be able to have two active SIM profiles at the same time. So you could have your work number and your home number on the same phone. And yeah, and it's really interesting. This is basically the previous limitation is without going into horrendous technical detail, which Michelle from last week went into amazing detail in his article. If you're really interested, you should go read it. But without going into my half an hour deep dive into how eSIMs work, Basically, it's just like kind of like a physical connection, but kind of in the same way that virtualization and virtual memory and things like and kind of concepts like this work on a computer. Google has basically patented this kind of like being able to have virtual SIM, pro SIM profiles in the same eSIM. Mm. And apparently there are have been numerous patches to AOSP uh, submitted that kind of work with Android's telephony framework that will make room for this. Um, the, we're not quite sure what it's going to look like yet and whether, you know, this, this, uh, patented technology, which is actually generic enough that it could work, not just on say a Google phone, but any kind of like windows, like iOS device, whether this will be something that Google kind of puts out there free or not so free, but yeah, if you're the kind of person that loves dual SIM technology, but wants the convenience and the kind of technological advancements of having a single eSIM, maybe you will be in luck soon. So it's really interesting. Um, but definitely check out the article if you're super interested in how this works. And I'm actually really surprised. Uh, Michelle linked to some articles. I, I mean, I 
I don't often use a dual SIM. Like I, I, no, I generally I have my work either. phone and my personal phone, but apparently a lot of people do. And not just for, you know, um, like, you know, I mean, I know like a lot of us who are, are like in this space, who like to review things, like to swap out SIM cards and try different phones. And, but, you know, and, and maybe like the work home case is kind of like, you right. know, easy to see, but actually in a lot of places, people will have two separate SIMs for their voice plan versus their data plan. Cause in a lot of places that have a bit more competition, let's say you can pick a cheaper voice plan and then have the same SIM on your phone, like have a cheaper data plan. So this is actually pretty interesting and hopefully will be a boon to many of y'all out there, you know, um, what's a cool like cowboy term for like you know dual gun six? I don't know. <laughs> dual slinging and sim cards. <laughs> like, dual, all the sims, all the e sims. Yeah, th- th- so. this is this this is the kind of thing that I knew was out there, and I always chalked up to like other countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, or or yeah. traveling over uh, traveling yeah. to a different country, and I want my exactly one sim, and then the sim for the country that I'm that I'm visiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder if really this is something that might help actually promote eSIM as a technology that we see more often? Because I feel like the phones that we get now, like eSIM has the potential to really kind of change how do phones are designed on the inside, right? Like if if we right. all bought into eSIM, that's less complexity that would need to be built into the phone itself. That's less uh, space inside of the hardware that needs to be made mm-hmm. for the eSIM. So removing that would free up space for other things or make phones slimmer or whatever the case may be. But yet we're not there. eSIM has been around for a while and yet phones come out maybe with eSIM compatibility, but then they also have a SIM card slot. And like, I wonder if or when we will get to a point to where eSIM is just kind of the standard and something like this support for dual, uh, dual, uh, dual SIM through the eSIM, that seems like a step in the right direction as far as that's concerned. Maybe that'll never happen, but that would be nice. I have a question. Um, Will there, so that you have the dual SIM thing, can you do mm-hmm. like a, will that be, will you have eSIM and, you know, regular SIM mixture? Can you do that? Or is it just yeah, like you can do one that now. or the other? You can do that now. That's, yeah, you can do that now. Yeah. So the, the thing is with the eSIM is that, um, so you can, so every time for every network character, for a character, network character, for every network carrier, for each one of your same numbers on that carrier, you have to have a SIM profile. And so on the eSIM, you can have already multiple profiles, but you can only have one active because the connection between like the modem that is actually, you know, connecting to the network and getting, sending and receiving data and like the eSIM, there's like, there's just like one road. It's basically like a one lane highway. And so basically the profiles kind of have to take turns using that highway. So, so that's why you still need right now dual SIMs. And actually that's one of the solutions to dual SIMs. I don't know offhand any phones that do this, but mm-hmm. yeah, you can have an eSIM and a nano SIM, like for example, um, to solve, to kind of get, to bypass this. So it is a thing now, but hopefully with MEP, multiple enabled profiles that Google has, you could, you don't need the dual SIM anymore. You wouldn't need like two eSIMs, like two embedded chips, or you wouldn't need like a slot and an embedded chip. So Mm. yes, you can do, you can, you can mix and match now. It's kind of actually, it's very, it was very interesting to see that, you know, the very, the various ways you can mix mix and match an eSIM with an actual SIM Mm. that are available now. And I, I don't, I guess I don't, I can't think of any phones right now that do it, but I suppose maybe in markets where this is a lot more prevalent kind of practice that you probably would see more phones. Let's go to that drop down and kind of go through all the, all the phones. And all these <laughs> yeah. Start at the top of the list and we'll, uh, yeah. we'll one by one look up their SIM status. And uh, <laughs> I just like to turn riveting. nano SIM. I just want to, I just want to have as many nano SIMs in my life as possible. It's so fun. <laughs> yeah. Right um, on. I'm happy yeah. we talked about that story. Thank you. Your your uh, explanation of it was far better than I was trying to like grasp it earlier. And for whatever yeah. reason, I think I was I was just I had done a lot of no, by um, that point. it. <laughs> and just to be clear, the, this technology is called multiple enabled profiles because that way it turns a single lane highway into a multi lane highway, more or less. Nice. That's great. So anyway, mm, that's yes, a great that's way to explain one. it. Yeah. I, that, yeah. That's. that's it took me like a couple hours to figure that out, y'all. I was real glad we talked about this. I had notes and everything. I was that's like, that's metaphor, how it is. Metaphors. That's how it is. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Now, uh, Samsung, I thought 
this is actually really interesting. This is good in the in the direction of making our devices uh, more repairable and enabling people to kind of repair their own devices. Samsung is actually working with iFixit to help some of the last few years devices, their last few years of devices, to be more serviceable. Um, by the user themselves. So the S20, the S21, those are the initial devices. Also the Tab S7 Plus um, this summer, apparently that's coming a little bit later, but Samsung's gonna produce official parts, tools, guides, all these things for people who are wishing to fix these devices themselves instead of taking them into a shop. Of course, Flo, I'm reading basically this these details from your article uh, that you wrote what are, what are your thoughts uh, being the former president of the Samsung fan club? Right. I mean, now that I have an iPhone, that's it. It's over. Just <laughs> yeah, it's kidding. All, it's all done. <laughs> ousted. Just ousted. Kidding. So. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, as an aside, by the way, I'm still carrying a OnePlus 9 on my main primary SIM. Just, you're just right. carrying it around, not using it, just carrying it. Right? <laughs> I, hey, it's, it's right here and, and everything. But, um... You know, I really do. So first of all, when I saw this news come through, I thought, A, this is clearly like a me too. This is clearly a look what I can also do uh, situation from Samsung because Apple really excited its user base when it said that it was going to give the repairability back into their hands. And then, you know, like I fix it is partnering with Samsung on this one. So it's just really good it looks really good if you're a Samsung user. It's like, all right, I've got iFixit behind this. Yeah. This means that I'm like taking back the ownership of my devices. I get to like fix my own thing in my garage or at my desk, but we still don't have the full details on what's it gonna actually be like to replace this thing. Cause Samsung is saying, oh, you can replace, let's say, did it say you could replace the charging port? Okay, that's it, that's cool, but what, what is that going to be like for me on the user end? Because I have seen what the Fairphone does for people who want a phone that's, you know, perfectly user serviceable. And that thing is easy because it feels like opening up a PC that was made for a person to go in and tinker with it. Yeah, it was created versus, with that in mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Versus a soldered together phone that is, or I shouldn't say soldered, uh, I mean glued Luke. together, because that's really what it actually is. Uh, I can't imagine taking a heat gun and, you know. <laughs> All you need I am is. So I am so scared to do, <laughs> yeah. like I have the ingredients to do that here at my home and I'm so scared to work with anything with heat near a device that I rely on daily. So very curious to see what this is going to be like. I have some possible very insight. Oh yeah, Burke? yes, Burke. So as a DIYer, yes. Um, so it's it's more to do with like the fingerprint uh, sensor and stuff. That's like the things that are integrated into the screen and, mm -hmm. or the touch sensor. Like before, and like before all this, you could just easily swap out on most phones. And but the thing is too is now it's like you don't just replace the screen. You're like replacing the screen assembly or whatever you know the sandwich. But. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe they just, you know, make the the glues less sticky or something or just, or, I don't know. It's like or, Burke when yeah. they give you a sandwich and it has a toothpick in the middle. And then once you take the toothpick out, it all just kind of like oh, yeah. falls apart. It's like e-toothpicks yeah. they're going to put in. Yeah. Yeah. E -toothpicks. Totally. Now I'm hungry. Now I want a sandwich. <laughs> I want my sandwich yeah, it's with a toothpick in It's dinner time in California, in that's why. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of the toothpick is, a, is a, a, a green olive. Yeah, that's what I want. Uh, no, I th I, hey, I think uh, more repairability, uh, more user serviceability is a good thing. So the fact that Samsung's actually working with iFixit to make this happen is a great gesture, a great starting point. And, you know, again, love to see that more and more often. Maybe what this does, though, to your point, Flo, is if Samsung's thinking about this with these previous devices, devices that they didn't necessarily or probably did not design with this kind of fixability in mind, maybe what this does is hopefully this shows intent for future uh, design possibilities. You know, maybe they kind of keep that in mind as they go forward, like, hey, but I don't know. I don't know that they necessarily buy into it completely and they, they release a fair phone, but maybe they use a little less glue if they don't have to, you know, with the idea that eventually they're going to need to do this with those phones too. And how can we make that easier for users? 
I don't well, know. I do think if Apple does it, so will Samsung. Yeah. So, Cause that's, yeah. if it sells, if it sells devices and they see that that's what it's doing, then they're just, they're going to be like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Here you go. Buy our phones. So say we all. No. Yep. No. All right. Finally, this was kind of a last minute addition here, but when you got this one. Yeah. So finally, for all of you folks still rocking the pixels, you're getting your April 2022 pixel update. I know we just got the March one recently, but if you're like me, you're going to see that nice shiny April update soon. In particular, for the Pixel 6, you're going to get some wireless charging updates, some camera fixes. Apparently, some folks were seeing some bad performance, some unintentional zooming with your front facing camera, which sounds absolutely horrifying, depending on the time of day and whether you've woken up and done your makeup or not yet, like me. Um, and sometimes even green screens and previews. So it sounds like there's there's some buggy issues with the cameras on a camera software in Pixel 6. So hopefully you'll see a fix for that. There isn't any mention of the kind of weakened haptic vibration that some folks reported with the March update. And in fact, in a statement to Review Geek, Google seemed to more or less say that it was a bug, but not a feature and that they're basically iterating on... I guess haptic vibration and like the the the, the patterns and interaction patterns they're working on that. So uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, I think they recognize that people, some people don't like the new the new way that haptic feedback works, but um, you're not going to get a fix in it in this April update. And for everyone else, and by everyone else, I mean everyone with the Pixel 3a and above, you'll also get some fixes for problems with live wallpaper, some picture-in-picture -picture crashing, and apparently some blackouts that happened with notification shades and quick settings, as well as the all-important security flaws. The uh, update yes. is rolling out over the next week. If you're not, if you can't wait, then of course there's always OTA and factory image, which you can flash. Ah, uh, but there's your April oh. 2022 Google Pixel <laughs> nice. update. I'm not that the only one good. on this show doing Flash Gordon jokes. Thank you. Oh, that's the best that's song ever, song. dude. That's, that's a great, great song. song. It's a great soundtrack. <laughs> Uh, good. If <laughs> Although a lot of Pixel uh, 6 owners are like a little gun shy with updates at this point. It's kind of like, yeah, I guess I'll update. Hopefully it fixes things and doesn't just break other things. This is where we are with Pixel 6 updates right now. You never know what you're going to get. It's, it's, I, like that, I like that it's like a game of chance. Almost, yes. You know, like, <laughs> could it get any worse? Oh, yeah. let's see. Why not? I hit the button. I'm on the I'm I'm on yeah. the ride. I'm up for the roller coaster. Let's go. And I have like as a developer, I have too many phones anyway. So if yeah. it breaks, I'm just gonna like just load up something on my I have like actually the S twenty two Ultra. So you know, if anything else, we'll just we'll just let it we'll thunderdome it. We'll just thunderdome the phone. We'll <laughs> That's what I've been living on and on the beta track. I keep threatening that I'm gonna move off the beta track. But in order for me to do that, I'm gonna have to wipe my phone and I keep not wanting to actually do the things you know, the preparation to, to wipe my phone so it keeps not happening. So I just deal with it. Thunderdome, exactly. All right. Coming up in just a few moments here, we're going to jump into the hardware. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, love it. And oh, yeah, so Victor That's delivered awesome. Flow's that Hardware is... Shack. Talk about for for our audio listeners. We just got uh, our brand new bumper. <laughs> Can we see it again? Can we see it again? There? That was that was pretty rad. Yes, yeah, with have... the music and everything. Right. We got Nano so, No. We got Tamagotchi. We got yeah, we got a keyboard, a clicky clack Victor, keyboard on Victor. there, and a Victor, great I'm flows cry. hard. Victor, I'm gonna cry. This is like really I mean, like, sweet. There is, I'm there is nothing incredibly there is nothing moved right now. Nothing nicer than a customized bumper. <laughs> you right. have a customized so... bumper flow. Wow. You even got not one, but two Victor, Samsung devices really, on that's there. That's really nice. That's really, <laughs> that's really great. nice. He just put so many like of my favorite things on there, and it just means a lot. <laughs> so the reason really nice. Victor did this is because as I allude, well, A, you're awesome. So we know that, but also B, he did this because you have not one, not two, not three, but four <laughs> devices. Oh, we're, I don't know how we're going to do this uh, in, a, in a relatively quick Rapid sort of fire, fashion. Okay, we don't but have you got to. Four devices. There's too much to say. I feel like Jason, we can start off this first one together because I saw that you also have this phone. Yeah, in I've got a war story presence. though, but I want to hear yours first. Did you say you have a war story? Yes, with with wow. the with this phone, but uh, I'll oh, get no. to that in a second. That's, I want to hear your take. Oh, on it. Okay, 
Let's see if I can offer you a segue. Um, <laughs> so the first phone that we're talking about, and what I'm going to do first is actually clear the notifications on here because I don't need you all to see yeah. what is happening in my life. Um, Fair. The OnePlus 10 Pro is what we're talking about first. And I, when I got this phone in hand, I was looking at, at so I told you all that I've been using the OnePlus 9 for the last year and... I really like the size. I like how thin it is. I like that it was just kind of a plain Android phone. I have not been on board with the Samsung and Pixel look of this generation. Just for me personally, the phones feel a little bigger than what I want to wield. And so I was like, oh, the OnePlus 10 Pro, like this is it. Let's see what they got here. And they almost, almost got it, but there's still a couple things that they really need to improve about it. First things first, it doesn't come in a lot of options like the last couple of OnePlus family of phones, which is really frustrating because the one thing that I really loved about the OnePlus 9 that I still love about it is, is it has 12 gigs of, ma- of RAM. Mm-hmm. You may not think that that's like super important, but when you have a phone that's getting old, like just having that extra RAM really helps. It's like how you would put an extra stick inside your computer to just kind of give it a little more runway to figure out what it's doing with, you know, it's processing. So I'm really bummed about that. I'm also bummed that they have a limited storage offering for this, only 128 gigs which is the minimum in 2022. Yeah, I agree. Because although mm-hmm. we have all these cloud storage, you know, situations, the pictures we take are bigger. A lot of us are downloading video onto our phones now, like gigabytes yep. to watch, mm-hmm. you know, on the go or just to like have these high res videos of our children on our phones. And so it just feels really it feels like OnePlus said, "Oh, this is the flagship phone we're going to put in the US." but we're feeling kind of shy about it. So we're not going to go full torque. And I'm really bummed about that because why did they decide not to do it this round, but they've been doing the last couple of generations. Yeah. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? It really has seemed like OnePlus has leaned into its pro to be like, yeah, here's a, here's a pro competitor with a lot of the other, the premium flagships. And you're right on this one. It kind of steps down in some surprising areas. Um, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, there are good things about it. So it has a really long battery life. This was actually the longest of all the new phones I tested that had 5,000 milliamp battery in it. And that includes, by the way, the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So Mm. something to keep in mind there. I think it might have to do with the slightly smaller screen uh, and, you know, other little details here and there, but good battery life. Uh, still has that alert slider. That's like my favorite thing that exists on OnePlus, and I am so happy <laughs> they took that from the iPhone and kept it. Mm-hmm. It's so nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the back, we've got three lenses plus this Ugh. fourth circle, which a lot of people, sorry, which a lot of people thought that fourth circle was going to be a fourth camera. What it actually is, it's just an expertly placed flash. It's a very it's a bright pretty, flash. It's a pretty Ooh, flash. It's very nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I know I say it every time, but if anybody has that fear of holes, this Trip, phone is not Tryptophobia, so, I believe, is what it was called. Right? Yeah, not good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to scare you. I mean, to be fair, Samsung has the same amount on the. I know all, all, all they all do is like honestly, it's like I, I feel for anybody who has that because walking into a into a, a, a carrier store is going to be a nightmare. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, jeez. Yeah. I will say I liked the cameras. A lot of people didn't like them, but the reason, the way I felt about it is that oh god, this is so much better than what they did with the nine and the eight. Oh, finally, they have figured out their camera algorithm. That's kind of how I looked at it. But you could definitely see the limitations between a OnePlus 10 Pro and a Pixel and a Samsung sensor. Pixel and Samsung do a lot more AI in the background than, I mean, they're, I shouldn't say they do a lot more. With, they are tuned differently than the OnePlus algorithm is. So when you're comparing shots, you'll see like, oh, you know, Google Pixel is more focused on uh 
having a clear photo versus Samsung, which is more focused on having a sharp photo, let's say, like in low light. So it's just kind of interesting、yeah. to see the differences there.、Uh, but I, I was, again, I was happy to see that they finally let you keep that shutter open to get a decent night shot. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Other than that, I think,、um, you know, the software is fine. It's okay. Don't, It's fine. Don't I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of shelf, which I guess I can show you. Turn it off. Turn、yeah. it off. Everything、yeah. else is fine. I like that you can add your own icons. You know, I'm like a big one about that. I don't really like to deal with third party launchers,、shelf. even though I write about them, just because for me, I want the experience the phone wants to give me. So I'm okay with Oxygen OS 12.1. <laughs> There we go. I've turned it off now. I, the, I mean, the main reason I don't like it, I mean, sure, there, there might be usable features in there that you just saw, but when I'm going up to my notifications, half the time I'd end up pulling down the shelf. I'm like, nope, that's not what I ever want、It's、on an Android、aggressive. phone. I always want my notifications when I swipe down from the top. I think、yeah. they tuned it to be more aggressive in、uh, Oxygen OS 12 than they did. In the last version, so I guess Oxygen OS 11, because、yeah. I still have 11 on the 9 and I'm still using the shelf there, but I don't、uh, accidentally pull it down the way that I was on the OnePlus 10 Pro. So, yeah, to keep in mind. But overall,、uh, I was just going to say this is my conclusion on this is that I'm not switching to this phone as my daily driver. Sticking with the OnePlus 9 li- Pro. Yeah, the I big do like, problem I, I is. Do like, I do like the decision factor going on with you, Flo. Is like, is like, and the ultimately, <laughs> I am not switching this as my daily driver.、Yes. Like, it's like, it's a judgment call that's made at the end of the review, and I like it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, here, I'm here for it, Flo. So, yeah. It doesn't have MM Wave, which I really need on Verizon because I, you、yeah. pay to have that ability on Verizon and I am paying the highest tier. Don't send me messages right now about what I could be paying for. You know, we've been talking about this for years. Anyway, <laughs> I need a phone that gets me the service that I'm paying for. Otherwise, I'm wasting my money.、So. Yeah, fair enough.、Mm. Fair enough.、Yeah. We、well, want to hear my war story. Yes, go. Okay. Yeah.、Um, my war story is. I got this phone two weeks ago and I can't, I can't really add to your review because I got a device and I, I used a cable to transfer my data from my Pixel 6 Pro over to this,、uh, the, the device, the OnePlus 10 Pro. And once I finally got it all set up, it would just, it would, Power off and reboot randomly, very randomly. There was never any sort of indication as far as when it was going to happen. Sometimes I'd swipe down the settings and boop, it would blip off. Sometimes I'd go to like the power menu and it would just it would just p- power off. I'd open an app. It was very, very sporadic. So I got in touch with, with OnePlus and said, hey, you know, this is happening. I don't know why it's happening. At this point, I hadn't tried to do a fresh install. I just you know, had done the data transfer.、And、they said, okay, that's weird. We'll go ahead and send you a, another device. And、uh, you know, maybe it's a flaw in that particular hardware. Did, and this is the, the backup device. I set it up the same way, curious to know if it was going to happen again. And sure enough, immediately it started happening again.、Um, so I could never get a stable powered on. Uh, state out of it. When I finally wiped it and installed it fresh from, from zero, it was fine. Turns out they have now received some information from at least one other person complaining of the same thing. And the, common, the commonality between my situation and theirs is that they too did data transfer between a Pixel 6 Pro. Over. So there's something happening right now, and I'm, I'm confident that they're going to fix this in a software update and that that'll happen.、Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But that's why I can't actually chip in because I really wanted this to be like a combined review, but、um, I could never get a stable device until like a few days ago when we finally, you know, finally isolated it. So,、uh, so that's my war story. I don't, I'm, I'm assuming that's not going to affect. Many people, I'm sure they're going to put out a, an update. At least I certainly hope that they do. But I know that they're looking into it. So something to keep in mind. Who, who's going to switch from a pic, just, I'm being honest. Well, someone will. switch from a Pixel 6 Pro? Someone. Make, okay. People that's do. Fair. That's fair. Things happen. No, I know. They should release a patch for it. I agree with you. But I'm just thinking in terms of ranking here in my mind. Yeah. Eh, yeah, my, I mean, it might not impact a lot, a lot of people, but it's certainly something they don't want in their build of their phone. So, exactly. Yeah. 
And well, who knows I that might you, that might impact other devices. I, I'm, you know what I mean. I'm not saying that it does, but if that exists with data transfer from Pixel, they're going to want to know that it doesn't exist with other phones too. So, yeah, Anyways. exactly. Well, I can tell you what phone I won't be bothering with daily. Okay, what is that? That is the. I'm just going to hold it up because I. I don't think it's on right now. The Motorola Edge Plus, which is what I have here. It is their flagship device. Mm, that's right. Now Motorola isn't going back mm -hmm. to flagships again. It's like mm -hmm. this little, I, uh, yeah. this teeter-totter that they get on every once in a while. It's like, yep, we're doing them. Nope, we're not. Yep, we're doing them. Nope, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry I'm not in the studio to show this off. I will say the hardware is nice, um, but it's not like outstanding sort of thing. You know, uh, Motorola isn't exactly known for its, uh, how shall I say, mm, stealing the show with its outfit. It's more known for showing up and being prepared for the event. That makes sense. That's so fair. you kind of have, yeah, kind of have the same thing going on here with the Edge Plus. Sadly, folks, the case that is supposed to have the included stylus accessory is still not out yet. It has um, yet to be there's no timeline on it yet, so I wasn't able to actually try any of the previously announced stylus features that the Edge Plus can do, but I was able to try everything else, and I can tell you that although I really like the display, the fact that it has the latest processor in it, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and a macro camera lens that actually took some decent portrait shots, everything else about that camera is so bad. Not it's so bad. Not surprising. Oh. Yeah. It's so Literal bad. It cameras. reminds me of pictures I took 10 years. Sorry, 10 years is a little. <laughs> it reminds me of pictures I took, let's say, when I first started here at All About Android in 2015. Yeah. You know, yeah. just sensors have come so far since then. We've figured out how to do night vision. We figured out how to enlarge pixels to get in more detail. And when you look at the photos that Motorola produces with the Edge Plus, it's almost Ew. insulting, yeah. especially considering how much they're asking for this phone. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing. Even if this phone does turn out to be one of those Verizon, hey, uh, sign up your family for Verizon and we'll give you three free Motorola phones, okay? Because you know how they like to do those things. I am upset for those family members, okay? Because the the camera that they're gonna have on them. While the interface is fine, the phone hardware is fine. Um, there's only IP57 water resistance, but that's, you know, better than nothing. That camera is just, it's just a real bummer if you are not shooting anything in daylight, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, those low lights did not look so hot. Motorola, I feel like the Motorola phones rarely were ever like, top of the heap as far as cameras were concerned. It was kind of like the trade-off, kind of the expectation that I had with most Motorola phones. Yeah, yeah but it's 2022. Oh, I know. I yeah, no, really... I agree. <laughs> kind of at, this, at this point, you kind of yeah. can't, you know, even, even companies who were never known to have great cameras at this point have kind of figured out a lot, you know? Uh, yeah, so no good. No, you know it is good though, and it's a phone that you can't buy in the United States. I'm sorry. This phone is so good, and I'm so sad that you can't buy it. The Xiaomi 12 Pro. Also, I I charged it, but it's it's not on right now. Um, hold on, I'm cleaning it so I can take a little nice picture <laughs> for you. See, that, <laughs> that's the karma. That's the car, that's the karma for rubbing it in that we can't get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before before you tear into this review, how have you um, have you spent considerable amount of time with other Xiaomi phones? Is this the first one that you've really done this type of deep uh, review with? This is the first one I've done a deep review of in my eight or nine years that I've been covering this beat. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, they're gorgeous phones, right? They're gorgeous devices yeah. that we hardly ever get the chance to even interact with because they don't really, they aren't really U.S., you know, at all. So. This feels like butter. This is so, the Ooh, matte wow. on this back is so butter. nice. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Look at this rear camera. Look how cool that is. Yeah. That's that actually pretty lens. cool. I mean, it's a great this yeah, multiple, multiple ones. 
Despite the holes, that looks pretty cool. So, <laughs> ah. Now that Ron is tryptophobic, yeah. I, I'm, I, I think I've go. given myself, this, this show has given me tryptophobia. Here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, that actually, that back of that phone is, is pretty darn cool. So yes. Yeah. It is. It comes in a pretty purple color that they, I think it's purple, that they didn't send uh-huh. me, which is a bummer. Yeah, that would go perfectly with wow. your headphones, Wynn. My everything. And your hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my hair, my background. Once again, people, also people love purple. Also my favorite color, People love purple. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> Missed opportunities. Yeah, this wrong. <laughs> it's okay. Yep. It's okay. $1,000 for this phone as well. It also has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in it. Uh, it has up to 12 gigs of RAM. Again, you know how much I love having that option. It does not have water resistance, which just seems like a trend. I, I don't understand why. I mean, mm. I'm sh- I'm sure Cost there's a perfectly savings, like, guess, so. yeah, engineering reason for all of this, but something to keep in mind. Again, it's not sold in the US. So if you're in the US, you're listening to this and you're like, bah, I don't care. Right. Um, I will say the camera on this thing is so good. I am... I am really mm. understanding why this phone makes so much money in other countries. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> wow. So, okay. So, so good. good. Alt. Where, like where, if you had to like rank out of the air right now, like, you know, compared to what, what is your favorite camera on a smartphone right now? And how does this compare to it? Oh, I think I, I hate to say this cause it's so obvious. The pixel six is the best camera because of the algorithm Mm. situation that it has going, it's very good if you want to shoot pictures and just immediately upload them to Instagram. The Galaxy S22 lineup has gotten so much better, but you really want that ultra if you want to have like the 17 different cameras in your pocket. Um, The the zoom on those things is incredible. It's... Yeah. If you like to do that. The Xiaomi has a little bit from both worlds. So the algorithm that it's using, it is a lot like Google's, which I really like. It's more natural colors and not super saturated. Um, And it also has some of the zoom that Samsung offers, but not the full capability, the full uh, optical capability. Because that's, you know, that's what Samsung decided to focus on this year. So focus. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, um, ah. yeah. <laughs> me UI is not bad y'all it's it's really fine it's also fine yeah <laughs> nice fine. you don't have to use the launcher if you don't like it so that's true it's fine you can change it yeah exactly yeah you always yeah. change it yeah Yep. Yeah. So, and and this is a a thousand dollars. I mean, obviously you can't buy it USD in yeah in US dollars. But so I mean, thousand dollars. If it was priced at a thousand dollars in the US, do you think it it deserves that high price? Yes, uh, because it does everything that Samsung and Google can do, and they are pricing their like pro models around the same uh, price point. So mm-hmm. it makes sense that. That's what it would be if you are converting it overseas. But if we are talking about if Xiaomi could sell this phone in the U.S., we know the answer is no for a multitude of reasons we're not going to get into right, right now. Right, right, right. Yeah. Interesting. So, which is a bummer because, you know, we're missing out on some really good tech. Yeah. Just some choice or some really yep. good tech. So... I suppose we also have a lot of really good tech in other directions, but yes, I would love to, I would love to spend more time with Xiaomi devices. I think the, the, man, I have, I have the one Xiaomi device I ever actually received. And I think I reviewed it on, on all about Android when I got it. I mean, this was years ago. So, I mean, it's, it's from, excuse me, it's from, I, it's gotta be like 2013, 2014. The Hugo Barra era. A it's somewhere around then. Yeah, I, I suppose it would be. And it was very iPhone like, like it was, it was definitely in the era of Xiaomi, like just releasing anything that looks like an iPhone essentially. And I think even then MIUI was very iPhone like as well. It didn't do the app tray. It only remember, did the, I remember that the, yeah. the horizontal kind of app, um, 
app assortment similar to the iPhone and stuff. It even so. went down to like the little separators and the panels like on the sides of the phone. Like mm. it literally had the little bumper, the crumple zones like were even in the same spot and like... Well, I remember at the, the time. Curves, I, yeah. I remember at the time thinking about Xiaomi and the fact that we didn't have Xiaomi in the states, and kind of the prime talking point was, oh, they could never do that. They could never release phones in the states because Apple wouldn't let them. Apple would sue them out of existence. And I don't think that's the. I don't think that's the the limiting factor now. But it that, may have been then. The it's not now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Things have changed a lot. Things have changed. And then you have one final device, which it sounds like you haven't, uh, you haven't actually, like you haven't fully reviewed this yet. You're kind of in no. the process, but tell, give, give us kind of a little introduction to what this is. Well, this will look very familiar to you. So this is a Samsung device. Let me turn this, <laughs> this on and see if you can. This is a nice little uh -huh, Samsung device. Uh -huh. Pretty. And there's some more of those cameras on the back. Look so how many, many holes, holes there are. Oh, wrong. my God. I, I'm seriously, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> oh, my God. Five. Too many. Five I have to look away. Way. I have to look away. What? <laughs> I do need to do a full assessment of this phone. I'll tell you, I've been wielding it over the weekend A53. because I'm... Is it? Did I say Galaxy A53? Oh. I didn't. The Galaxy... <laughs> this okay. is the Samsung Galaxy... A53 5G. This is what I've got ah, in my okay. hand right now. <laughs> um, and I'm still using the phone, so I don't have like a full assessment of it yet. But I can say that it's definitely a mid-range device. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, price time, in like 450-ish, uh, somewhere around there. Looks like yeah. Sprint it's has it for 450. the same price as the Pixel 5a and... Um, the Pixel 5a and what else am I thinking of in my mind? There was another phone. Oh, the iPhone SE is the other one right. that I'm thinking of. Yep. Those are all the 450 range of phones that are competing right now for the mid range. And, uh, I will say that this feels like a, like I said, a mid range device. Um, let's see 120 Hertz refresh rate on the display though, which is really nice. So it has some like flagship like features, mm -hmm. but then when you get down to the processor, it's still a mid tier processor with six gigs of Ram. And when you're playing games like Pokemon go and you go into that little AR mode, things start to get a little dicey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. but it's, it's still. Um, high performing enough that I can watch Pluto TV in a picture in picture window and uh, edit my Pokemon in my Pokemon. <laughs> you know, bank. work. This work, just thing. working. This is how I test phones. <laughs> yeah, this is a relatively new device too, released uh, just a couple of weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. so. Also a 5,000 milliamp battery. So I'm very curious to see if this outlasts those flagships with the, you know, they have more processor to power up and, and all that jazz. But what I'm really curious about is just this mid range right now, how this is very clearly a ploy to have Samsung compete directly against what the Google has done with the Pixel A series. So I'm very curious to see it. Now, unfortunately, this is something I overlooked. I don't actually have a Pixel 5a in possession, so I haven't been able to test it, you know, compared to like what this feels like. Mm -hmm. Which phone is it? I have a lot of phones on my desk. So um, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see what these $400 phones get you because I will say after reviewing the iPhone SE 5G, which I just did recently and seeing like what Apple does with their freaking bionic A13, A15 yeah. bionic chip. That's a, that's a hard thing to compete against what they're, what they're doing yeah. with their, their mid rangers. Yep. Because if I'm buying a cheap phone, excuse me, an affordable phone for my family member. I want the affordable, I want them to not bother me about it for a couple of years, right? Yeah. You could do that with an iPhone easily, especially one that's on the latest silicone that Apple can control directly. I'm thinking a lot more now about this pipeline because what is this phone going to age like? Is Samsung, is it going to be a part of the Samsung repair program? Like what is this? You know, they say that so they're going to have three years- yeah of, you know, software updates, but like, what is that really going to look like? And how's this phone going to age uh, yeah. with the six gigs mm -hmm. of RAM? 
So. Yep, yep. Well, the A series, the Galaxy A uh, series is a pretty darn popular uh, series for Samsung. Samsung mm -hmm. makes a lot of money off of that tier of devices. So um, hopefully that, you know, that level of buy-in results in uh, that level of support, the support that it deserves. So uh, we will certainly find out, especially as, as Samsung has been very vocal about broadening their support over the years. But then again, it comes around to, okay, well, it can go that long, but is it still a workable, usable, enjoyable experience at that time? And unfortunately, we won't know that until it happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it could be too late by the time we figure that out. Mm -hmm. Cool. This was a worthy hardware shack, worthy of the bumper. I think we should bumper. see it again. Yeah. I think we yeah. should see Ron, it again. Ron's should in, it in Slack like going off about this thing. All right, fine. Let's watch it one last time. I'm going off about yes, it. I'm, not, yes, I'm, a, little, I'm a little jealous. I'll just say that. <laughs> I'm man enough to admit that I'm jealous of a personalized bumper. Um, Heck yes. <laughs> Well, we'll have to so. we'll have to figure out what what we can do with a, a Ron. It's the nine hundred two one zero. No, no, I don't. Ron that's, is. that's the thing. That's the thing. Like, this is this is great because Flo didn't ask for it. Like I've got now, I've got to wait two years before I forget we did a personalized bumper for Flo, and then maybe I'll get one. It's just like it's like you can't pick your own nickname. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. So no, no, no. I don't want a bumper now. Okay. Oh, See it again. Yeah. See it again. <laughs> No, anyway. The music, I got to say, the music's a great selection as well. It sounds so 90210. <laughs> right on. Thank you for the uh, hardware shack, Flo. Thank you guys for <laughs> allowing me to just talk about all the stuff I've been doing. Absolutely. You know, it gets lonely sitting here writing words by yourself. Well, we should also remind folks everything that Flo talked about there. She has at least one article, if not a full review on already, right? She's reviewed the, the OnePlus 10 Pro, Motorola Edge Plus, the Xiaomi 12 Pro. She uh, did write about the A53 when it was announced. And so you can look forward to a review, I'm sure, coming up soon. But that's on Gizmodo. So find Flo on Gizmodo for all of that. Big thumbs up. <laughs> All right. It's time to venture into the app realm. Let's do it up next. I feel like we should rename this the app realm. I like that. I like, the the, I like it. We could, do a, we could do a bumper that's like the beginning of Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings with like a map. And it's like the app <laughs> I realm. I mean, it'll be better than Game of Thrones. I'll tell you that. Welcome be better to than the that app realm. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, talking about apps, let me tell you, I got very excited about an app today. Um, if you use Google Messages for your uh, SMS texting needs like me, uh, you're probably noticing a lot of changes that have been happening. We've talked about them here and there. Um, they're all tied into the March Android feature drop, which Flo, back in uh, March, you wrote about. Um, but what's interesting to me, at least, is how they're slowly rolling this stuff out. You know, we talked about the emoji reactions uh, in response with iPhone, uh, like iPhone replies, but with iPhone other users. That blew my mind when, like, I was in a, in a text chain with Ugh. multiple Android and iOS users and I got a, you know, a laughing at somebody's comment. Like, it worked in line. No more laughed at, you know, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, it's, awesome. so, it's so much better. Um, it's so nice yeah. to have that. But one of the things that we saw got written about, but when this got tested, um, I don't know when it was, a few months ago in India, um, and Flo actually wrote about it in, in an article back in early March, but uh, message categories, which finally rolled out to me today, all of a sudden I opened up my messages app, and at the top of the app, of, of the, the screen, uh, there are three buttons to filter the text messages. One button is all, one is personal, and the other is business. And let me tell you, it's like Google read my mind with the rollout of this because I was literally prepared to come this week ranting about how SMS is useless to me now because I got my my cell phone number is tied to so many like, give us your cell phone number, we'll give you 15% off and then text you daily about clothes sales and things like that, right? So there's so much spam coming into my uh, text messages, I was getting very frustrated. Now, if you tap that personal button at the top, it filters your text messages and just shows you text messages from people you actually interact with. And then if you tap the business one, it filters out all of those business text messages, which is awesome. Um, but then what's even cooler is that they have a setting where it will automatically delete those one-time password text messages that you might get for two-factor nice. authentication after 24 hours of receipt. And let me tell you, 
my my text messages are just like filled with bank of you know my bank of bank of america um <laughs> said it here's my account number um <laughs> bank, uh, bank uh bank one-time passwords twitter verification facebook like yeah. all the two-factor authentication that you have tied to your cell phone it will detect those and delete them after 24 hours which is just great for cleaning up oh, spam nice. and honestly this is the kind of application smarts and insight I would expect from Google. And if you ask me is a real differentiator to iOS and to other, like I was showing my wife who's an iPhone user. I'm like, check this out. She's like, Oh wow. I wish we had that. Like this is a real like a powerful tool and I'm very excited about it. So there you go. Um, there's some other stuff to look at in, in, in this batch of uh, functionality. Uh, they've also got uh, no, um, notices to reach out to contacts, uh, contacts if you left that conversation hanging, which happens to me all the time. Like the kind of, this is very Gmail like functionality. Like it'll bring it back to the top and nudge you to kind of respond. Um, and then uh, if you have your friends and family's birthdays in your calendar, it'll give you birthday reminders tied to your calendar, which is great because I depend on Facebook for that. And that's becoming increasingly useful list because everyone's leaving Facebook. So um. just FYI, that relies on you filling in your actual Google calendar for Google to crawl that and send you those reminders. Mm, sure. So that makes sense. You, it needs the data yeah. from somewhere. Right. Yeah. You need to, you so need to enter that Google's stuff. It's not going to just remind you, you know, that yeah. you're, it's your friend's birthday. Like don't rely on that. It's, it's like the apex technical school. I can't call you. You have to take the first step, right? It's a, <laughs> yes. that's a very New York Metro <laughs> local commercial thing I just did. But, um, um, but yeah, you got to enter in those, those birthdays onto your own calendar and then it will provide it from there. But, nice. um, I'm very, I'm very excited about this. If you can't tell it, it has given me a renewed, appreciation of text messaging so. nice i have not got this update yet on mine i was checking I, and i went into the play store and did an update or tr you know tried to see if there was an update and it i didn't have one so i'm, I'm not on the train. By, what, by how that works and why they why they roll it out so slowly in this way and like yeah it's fascinating to me I don't yeah know why. yeah so. but i'm looking forward to it those are some pretty yeah. meaningful uh updates I can tell you, man, that filter, it like, I got, I mean, you guys saw, I, I was texting yeah, you, you both on, you and, and on WhatsApp and on Slack. I was so excited. So, <laughs> And on Twitter. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. I, well, cause now I want it on the web. Like that's the thing is cause I use messages on the web because I, I find it much easier when I'm working and to type the text message instead of going to my phone and typing it. Um, and now I want parody. I want that same functionality on the website. So we'll see yeah. if you get it. Hopefully. Well, this app section is full of meaningful updates, including this one when probably yeah, the I most mean, meaningful update ever. I mean, I, I'm not even like, you're not even kidding for me. I mean, and talking <laughs> and talking about Google using smarts and being able to kind of parse information and, and know what yeah. your context is and what you need. Google is actually, well, Gboard rather, is rolling out a new feature kind of on the heels of the latest custom text stickers, which I tested earlier by sending my husband an overly early birthday message uh, and also on the heels of 2,000 more emoji kitchen, emoji kitchen mashups, which is awesome. You will now soon get Emojify, which is Gboard basic, basically taking that suggestion strip. And when relevant, uh, there you go, there's Google Smarts in there, the... What originally had been the text to speak microphone will now be changed to a magic a magic wand and hitting that magic wand will actually be the, well, it's called the Emojify key. And then it will basically add emojis within a sentence or replace all text with emojis. So yeah, we're not too many reports on what this looks like and how it works just yet, but you know, emojification I is got kind it. of awesome. <gasps> you got it? <gasps> yeah, I got it on my messages. It's... Very cute. Here, I I don't know how I'm going to show this to you, but let me type something <laughs> real quick. Okay, let me type hello. So you see I typed hello, and now there's a little, like, a little there's the thing. little wand over magic, there. Cool. Magic wand. Yep. So I'm going to hit that, and then it just populated it with those emoji well, afterwards. It's a little too close. Oh, wow. That's, Sorry, I'm just yeah, trying to give you a general it. idea yeah, of it. it. I was not trying not, to. Oh, no, no. <laughs> just, I'm just very impressed by the emojis on there. So I, yeah, it says when relevant. So I'm kind of curious whether this is based on your personal usage. I mean, obviously with certain words, like if there's birthday, it probably will insert a birthday cake or like, I mean, it already kind of suggests, you know, based on what text you're typing, you know, appropriate emojis. But this is interesting. It's kind of taking it one step further and going ahead and inserting it for you. So there you go, food. Google using food. Oh, wow. And then it gave me a kiwi and ah. an avocado and then a bunch of like tasty emoji faces. 
<laughs> so, I mean, oh, and it is okay. artificial intelligence that's making these picks. So there's going to be some strangeness <laughs> along the way, too. What it's I very chatbot. It right? It's very yeah. chatbot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What I like about this, because when you mentioned that for a while now, we've had the thing where you're typing it, you know, typing it out, and then it gives you the the emoji symbol that you can tap to insert mm-hmm. into it based on what you were typing, the, the word that you were working on. But what I don't like about that implementation is when I do that, and maybe this is like, this is a, it could be a generational thing, but when I do that, it ends up replacing the word with the emoji. Yes. And like, sometimes I'm cool with that, but sometimes like, yeah. I just want that to be the, kind of like my punctuation. And this exactly. kind of treats it like that. It says, we're going to keep the things you typed and then we're going to give you some emoji that go along with it. And then I could maybe go in there and delete the ones that I don't want and keep, you know, instead of having to always search for things. I don't know. I don't use. No, I agree. I have much, that problem but. too. No, I have that problem too. I, I kind of like this. Like I, so I, I've been watching a few YouTube channels and I think I was watching one episode of, um, I think like watcher or something. And they were talking about, Gen Z slang and it's starting to include like emojis now. And I've never felt quite so old as seeing, you know, a young social media expert explain what a, what seemingly to me as an old person now, a random, like a random string of emojis and explaining this kind of complex, like Gen Z zeitgeist that accompanies these emojis. So I kind of just see this as like, oh, I'm just going to like, you know, hit the button and then I'll just seem like yeah. 20% cooler, 20% more like, you know, I'm going to get all Dr. Like hip and, you know, with it. You know, they're going to see right of, through it though. Yeah. When they're no. going to, they're going to look at it. They're going to be like, Oh wow. What did an AI create this? It seems so random or see you know what I mean? <laughs> they're going to have a, they're going to have an elevated sense of this stuff. Oh, uh, okay. but, but I think well, it gets us closer. It, it helps it us out closer. at least, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> cause I will be right there with you. <laughs> so cool. Neat feature. Uh, Maps also getting a pretty meaningful update this week. Maps, always one of my favorite apps on the on my device. I, you know, as far as Google's apps are concerned, I just use it all the time. I use it so often when I don't even need to use it. Like Petaluma is not that big, and yet I use it everywhere I go because I might save two minutes or whatever. But anyways, uh, they're getting uh, the ability now in Maps to show toll prices so you could uh, maps a while ago got an update to where it would show where you know tolls are along the way now they're actually google's actually working with the agencies to pull back pricing and everything so you could potentially map out uh you know your destination and know in advance the amount of money you're going to spend on tolls uh at what each toll you know costs as you approach that sort of thing but also, and I think this is this is one of those like, why did this not happen sooner? Other apps certainly have this. Uh, traffic lights and stop signs integrated onto the map, so you'll know when an, an intersection that you're coming up to has a light. You know, could could be useful. Um, but I mean, it's more contextual information. Also, some details in the map are getting a little bit more uh, more improvements, a little bit more. Uh, uh, like outlines for buildings and things like that. So you're going to see a little bit uh, better kind of resolution, I suppose, as far as the maps that appear while you're navigating places. So cool. there you go. Maps is always cool. I always love a good maps update. Although they they do run the risk, maps updates do run the risk of bloating an otherwise really great app. I think updates like this make me happy it's when the the updates lean too far into the discover and all of these other t- tangential things which yeah i guess it makes sense that it would be in a maps app but sometimes it feels like the product is either informational or like a so it's like they're they're feeling the tug to go into the social direction and i don't want my maps app to be social i just want it to be really good at location you know Oh, Jason, that Maps app. You know, I was just thinking about that the other day because I constantly get pinged. Hey, you were just at this restaurant and remember that time you uploaded your pictures to that hiking spot that everybody liked? That makes you really popular. Will you please leave a review? It started surfacing (laughs) me like the reviews my friends leave of other restaurants. Um, And I just, it was like, did I sign up for this? I I was just trying to... 
know, it's, see it's the, 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 the yeah. I mean, I, w- I was complaining about the about the updates to the Google Maps app a couple of weeks ago. Right. Because when you open it up now, it is very yeah. noisy because mm-hmm. they're forcing the discover aspect of yes. maps, which I'm not going to maps to discover things. I'm going yeah. to maps to find things I already know about. Yep. Right. Yep. Well, like, I, fair. well, so. y- yeah, I mean. I I'm, I will say I will say that I have been using Google Maps to discover things because over the course of this pandemic I'm still not eating indoors so I use the filter on Google Maps to find places that are outdoors and that take reservations. Okay. Yeah, okay, that helps. That's so, helpful. Yeah. Yeah, but but do you open up maps to do that? Like I never open up maps to discover places. I yes, end right. up there I when I open up going. maps to mm-hmm. do so, like a navigation thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if I want to go to a location, like just out of habit, you know, I either just, well, usually what I do is I go to the Google search bar on my home page or my home page, my home screen and put the location in there. And then it takes me there when it needs to. So oh, I guess no. the Google maps part, I'm telling you, change, change your ways, change your ways, change my ways. It's, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, because well, I, again, during the course of this pandemic, I had to figure out how to use Google Maps so I can get out of the house and do it safely. So I started, you know, I'll pan to a location and I'll go restaurants near this area and I'll keep panning and panning to see like what's on the road that, you know, we're taking on the way there. Is there yeah. something good? What are the, what are the people saying about this restaurant that's there? I wish there? you could just turn it on or off though. Like only give it like if yeah. you want it. Cause it, I agree. It's yeah. like distracting and annoying. Hmm. When you just want directions. I just want to go there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, there you go. That's the maps update. And finally, Flo, you wrote about Plex and a feature that has you happy. I'm sure Ron is listening for sure. Ron's a big uh, fan of Plex. uh, What's going on with Universal Search? Well, it's a little more than Universal Search. So what they did is they launched this new like Discover feed. And what it does is you go in, well, okay. The Universal Search is all over the entire UI. All you have to do is go into the search uh, icon and look for something and it will return it for you with all of the places that you can watch it. And so that part is what's in beta right now. And that beta feature is a part of this Discover feed which includes a couple other things as well. And so that Discover feed not only helps you find new content to watch across the different services that you stream, but it also helps include your Plex library. So it really is like Plex just wants to be your one-stop shop. I want to watch something. What, you know, what should I go look for and which app will give it to me? That's pretty cool. Cause I got to tell you, like, so I use, I use just watch mainly for that kind of function. Right. Uh, the app just watch where if you want, you want to watch something, that's a great kind of like uh, independent app that will tell you all the different services it's available for, if it's available for rental or subscription or whatever. Um, but I've been trying to switch over to the Google TV app because that has the watch list and, and I'm using Google TV with my TV now, uh, you know, I've moved off of Plex for the main TV watching um, and I'm, and I want to leverage that watch list thing. But because of Google being Google and its agreements and things like that, you can't add shows from Netflix onto your watch list. Yep. yep. You can't add and Apple not- TV shows. Mm-hmm. Like you can't like, cause, because it's dependent on the deals Google has with their streaming yeah, providers, which blah, is BS. Blah. Yeah, so, totally. yeah, so this is good to see an independent way to have universal search. That's great. So. Yep. And it's not just like the streaming services, the the big ones that we all know. It's also the little guys. So uh, Curiosity Stream, which I think was mm. a advertiser yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, a yeah. While back. At one point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lifetime Movie Club, which is one that I belong to. Uh, and of that's if you, you love the Lifetime movie. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. Um, <laughs> even YouTube will be in results. YouTube TV is not because of what Ron said. Uh, that's definitely like we only want to keep this on Google TV kind of thing. Yep. And uh, I really, I really love it. But I already have a Plex server at home and I've had one for years. So I don't know how this is going to really touch like mainstream users just yet only plex, time will not, tell i know it's just plex is like i think about it like winamp okay yeah it's this utility oh, that really winamp. anybody can use i know really whips the llama's mm. ass <laughs> I, 
I think about it as a utility, really, that is just really... Sometimes people will find its way to it, but it's really the nerds that are keeping it alive. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah you're, you're right. And they have a lot of competition in streaming, but by being able to offer this, like, we'll just, we'll sink in anything, pretty much anything. We'll let you find it. I, I kind of, I kind of love it. I feel like I'm just going to default to this for a while and see, nice. see how it feels. Right on. Well, I was I, I was happy to see Plex that you had written about Plex because we used to I feel like we used to talk about Plex on this show a lot and actually go back far enough. Plex was actually a sponsor of uh, of Twit for a while mm -hmm. as well. If you go back. Can I plug something very quickly? Sure. I have to say in my discord which you can find a link to join the community at florenceion.com. We actually have a Plex channel that's just called Plex Updates because people are in my in the Discord are constantly working on their servers at home and trying to like fix things or migrating libraries to new NAS drives and all that. So this is like it really is a common thing mm -hmm. that you have to upkeep, which Plex is very clearly moving away from that because if you are a Plex user now and you were one before they did this huge changeover, you will recall your library used to be the front and center thing in the UI. Now it is hidden away in the overflow menu. It is not the main, you know, it's not the main event of the app. The app now is about content discovery. Where can I watch things for free, A? And now B, where can I watch this other thing from a service that I subscribe to? Hmm. So. Interesting. Excellent. Plex keeps on rolling. All right. We are going to uh, jump next into the feedback section. That is up next. Triple A at twit.tv, 347-SHOW-AAA. We heard from a lot of you this week. Uh, when you got the first one. Yeah, and the first one is us kind of closing the loop and kind That's of like right. coming full circle with the with the saga of Rory in Dublin, who <laughs> was trying to figure out how to make live wallpapers and material you worked, and we it it went it went to the far reaches of not far reaches but the close reaches of Twitter, and now we're back again because uh, I remember like a couple weeks ago we had Thomas Hunziker suggest uh, for us that maybe Rory might find Muse useful. And in fact, Rory is telling us this week, I installed Muse and the photos source and the results are quite good. You need to lock the screen and wake it for the material you theming to take effect, but it works a charm. One little niggle is that on the lock screen, the photo is panned all the way to left, which is a bit crap if your photo has a subject, Thanks for finding this for, for thanks for finding this for me. So thank you oh, so much again to Thomas Hunziker. And yeah, it, I did notice that as well. I, I actually looked into the git like I looked into the um to the code repository to see if there's like anything obvious. And like I don't honestly know because I was kind of looking and it seems like even Muse, the dimensions that they get for at least I think the wallpaper is launcher dependent. So basically Muse has to rely on the launcher to kind of give it the canvas on which it like drops your wallpapers. And this is about the lock screen. So I don't know if that is the case. And like, according to like some of the issues, what they do by default is if something doesn't quite fit the launcher screen, it will center crop it. And this is not center cropping. Rory is saying that they're actually like just taking the left hand. So I kind of wonder whether it's just something that the, that maybe hasn't found its way to the lock screen, especially since lock screens are generally, you know, not panable. So might be something good to kind of drop on their issues, um, issue section of the GitHub. But yeah, definitely glad that Muse worked for you, Rory, and really happy that we came full circle uh, and finding you a solution to your material you slash wallpaper, live wallpaper saga. So that was awesome. This is, this, is why we're, this is why we're here. This is why the community's here. This is everyone comes together. We find a solution and it's great. So look at that international too which is even better love it so. yes <laughs> well speaking of international our next email comes from uh andy from melbourne australia uh who says i would like to add my support for juan of columbia i think a recent emailer to all about android and throw some love toward android tablets just for a moment before i continue on 
We just had an email from Rory in Dublin. This is from Andy in Australia talking about Juan in Colombia. This is pretty cool. Like, honestly, awesome. can we take a step back for a second? I know, I mean, like, you know, Flo, I know you're talking about that, that phone not available in the U.S. and stuff like that, but we are truly an international show yeah. with international listeners. Like, that, that just blows my mind. That's awesome. So thank you, Juan, Andy, Rory, everybody. Um, so Andy goes on to say, as part of the Android faithful, my daily driver is a Pixel 6 Pro, but I often find a tablet better for productivity tasks as well as consumption. More screen real estate than a phone, but more portability than a laptop. I've used both an iPad, apologies for using a four letter word, haha, and Samsung tabs, the S4, the S6, and now the S8 Plus, and find the two systems interchangeable, really. <clears throat> they have their foibles, and the Android experience is certainly not inferior. Overall, I prefer it, but Android is what I'm most familiar with, it must be said. I tire of hearing, even from some of Twit's own luminaries, that, quote, Android tablets are crap because there, there are no good apps for them, and all you get are stretched phone apps which don't, don't display correctly, et cetera, et cetera. I wonder if such commenters have actually used an Android tablet in the past five years because my experience is very different. Hooroo and Tootlepip. Signed, Andy. <laughs> Toodle Pip, by the way. Toodle Pip. Um, yeah. Still fantastic. Toodle, Toodle Pip is very, very <laughs> filled to you. in the email inbox, by the way. Everybody seems to have a Toodle Pip. And uh, Toodle even, Pip. Oh, even what was his name from last week was, uh, you know, thanks for reading my email and uh, I appreciate my Toodle new Pip. name. You know, Toodle, Toodle Pip John. John. Toodle Pip Toodle John. Pip John. That, that's the bad news. Oh, Toodle God. Pip John is perfect. But anyway, um, Andy, you're absolutely correct. And I think that assumption of anybody who dismisses Android tablets really hasn't probably used them recently. I'm right there with you. I love my tablet. I'm using it all the time. It's fantastic. Um, I think it's, you know, I, as we enter the year of the tablet, as I've dubbed this year, um, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully the momentum will just pick up and more people will uh, join us in our tablet appreciation club that we have. One Even though Flo is skeptical, I can One tell. of us. Oh. One of us. <laughs> yeah. I gave up on tablets. You gave yeah, up so on You're them. missing the boat. You're missing the boat. Actually, that's not true. That's not true. I do use a tablet. And you know what it is? It's the Surface Go 3. <laughs> wow. How does that compare? <laughs> What what is what is your reason? I love it. Like what what is your <laughs> reason behind it? Because that? I just got Chrome on there and it's super small and I just go into Chrome and all my extensions are there and my autofill and you know, it's the Windows it's fine. It's fine <laughs> for doing research. It it serves your purpose well. There it's you. I didn't buy it, guys. It's a review unit. Come on. That's okay. even better. It's not <laughs> likely story. <laughs> <laughs> Right on. Thank you for writing in, Andy. Uh, appreciate your perspective on on tablets. All right, Flo. I figured it's been a little while, so you you have the honors this week. You guys are making me cry. I swear to God. Uh, all right. Well, what I, I'm today, I'm crying over the crickets. <laughs> crickets. <laughs> <Sound>. <laughs> Email of the, you know what, up, Burke? I'm sorry, I did not cue that very well. You're right. I, was, I mean, I, I was gonna actually. You pointed your bumper, but you know, I needed <laughs> the cue. Sorry, wrong button. Anyway, this is it. This is it. Uh, let's do that one more time, Burke. Just <laughs> love it. I love it. This is great. Yeah, fantastic. That's an interesting little twist. I, I yes, okay, sure. <laughs> Well, this one comes from Daniel. <laughs> Just move it on. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Uh, you are not a chicken, by the way. It is just that this show is based in Petaluma and people have chickens in California. So that's why, right? That's... That's why there was a chicken. Anyway, Daniel wrote in, in regards to your conversation about Google Tablet Docs smart home device in episode 571, there is something on the market that has tried to do this already. I think the concept would be fantastic if flushed out properly, I think flushed out properly with good specs and actually utilizing the full Google Home interface has a wider range, and I just triggered her, oh, no. has a wider range of hardware that it works on, and I think something like this would be a great multi-purpose solution on the Google Assistant side. All right, so that link points the to- smart, It's the Lenovo Smart Tab M10 FHD Gen 2 with a built-in. 
No. Wow. No. No, don't do this. Don't. No, don't. don't. Do wow. I can't. Ooh. I cannot endorse this. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, Why? Daniel. I'm so sorry. We gave you the email of the week, and now I'm telling you that I can't. No, endorse sometimes it. the email of the week is a good op- opportunity. Thank you, thank to, you, Bert. Uh, share they, they said it twice there, so <laughs> we need two fanfares. <laughs> um, I have this tablet for my kid, and I can already tell you it is very slow. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. It's just in terms like I, I don't deny that Daniel has made this work in their favor. To the way that fits for their particular situation, but I just this tablet is very cheap. One seventy seven ninety nine, mm-hmm. the cost on and that. All my kid does on her Lenovo tablet is she plays Lego Duplo, which is a very fun game for toddlers, and she watches now Disney Plus. Unfortunately, we opened that gateway to her. And I will tell you that those are the only two things that it can do. <laughs> Cause if you try to do anything else on it, it's like waiting for a very old computer to load a browser page. That's what mm. it feels like. So That's- I, I worry about the long-term use of a $200 tablet Yeah, as a smart home controller because of how frustrating it might get trying to like make let's say you want to make action buttons for people to use when they come over to your house like this is how you turn off this light blah 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 i don't know what that would be like on a tablet that is really just made for watching video do you have more faith in in google in pulling off this this sort of form factor if this is kind of what's in the on the horizon potentially this is at least what yes, we expect yes because of what samsung announced the Samsung's home hub. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just based on like the, cause I wrote about that rumor situation. I wrote about, no, it wasn't a rumor. Whatever. I wrote about that. I think last week it was the news about the. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was kind of a, a leak about the Nest Hub with Android and then coupled with Michelle Roman's article about finding code that seemed to support Uh, Mm -hmm. that functionality. Now, let me say something else controversial. Oh. uh, Since we're at the end of the show here. (laughs) So, Victor actually had a great suggestion of a cheap Fire, Amazon Fire tablet. Now, the reason I'm okay with you doing that is because Amazon has actually built out the interface for a smart home controller. I am using right now a Amazon um, Fire... uh, Crap. What's it called? The 15 inch big tablet that you put on the wall. Forgot which one that is. I forgot what it's called. It's an Amazon fire tablet. Yeah. It's, it's not the tablet. It's like the big photo album thing that you put on the wall. The echo show. Yeah. I think it's the show 15. Yeah. I think it's the echo show 15. Oh, the echo show 15. There we go. We got there. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yes. The wall mounted echo. And so I really, even though it's limited in what it can do, I like that it just has the interface built in, the the Amazon interface for controlling the smart home. But if you want to control things through Google, obviously that's not conducive to your situation. So I do think Daniel's suggestion is fine if you know what you're getting into. So let's leave it at that. Yeah, right. If you if you kind of have the expectation going in, uh, kind of knowing a little bit more about the tablet itself, that's that's fine. I mean, I think what this shows is there are other there are options, there are ways to do this. I am very curious to see how Google chooses uh, to do this, but you know, I'm a Google fan. I'm always curious yeah. about that. <laughs> well, Daniel, I want to thank you for sending in your email. Uh, your Email of the week. Uh, I can, can I say Burke? I uh, had to use two hands for that one. Okay. <laughs> oh, <like a> <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, right I just want to say I'm sorry that I, I I took that as far as I did, and I I didn't mean to. No. I didn't mean to, I don't, to I don't, on your suggestion. I don't, think, I just, I don't think you need to apologize. I just really felt a responsibility as a as a service journalist to offer a service in this instance. So 
Sure. Mm. Please don't be it's afraid of writing value. in for when I'm on. Yeah. The email of the week is not an instant like everything you say is right. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's just, it's like a great topic for discussion. And that's exactly, we delivered on the promise of the email of Thank the week. Thank you, Daniel. You facilitated that. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> All right. We've reached the end of this episode of All About Android. And uh, what can I say? It's awesome having all four of us here. Well, actually, all six of us. In total, there are six of us in the studio right now, and we have all made our presence known on this show. So many TVs around Jason. <laughs> amazing. I've got a couple of real people in here, too, on the other side of those TVs, so that's good. He's talking about Victor and I back here. That's right. Bur <laughs> Thank you, Burke. Burke and Victor on the other side of the screen there. All right, let's uh, start with you, Flo. What do you want to leave people with? What do you want them to know? Well, I work at gizmodo.com uh, and you can find my work there at a very special link called, very, called a very special link, flowrights.tech. It'll take you to my homepage uh, over at gizmodo.com so you can see all of the articles that I've written, uh, starting with the most recent. You can also check out my podcast that I do for Gizmodo called Gadgets, where we dive into the latest news and the latest devices that are out. That is at uh, pca.st slash gadgets. I have to use my Pocket Cast's vanity URL um, because it's great. And then lastly, if you want to hear me talk more about Google, I am also on the Relay FM network. I host the Material Podcast over there with Andy and Notco, who you all know and love. So please come check us out over there because that's another great podcast that I do. So yes, thank you guys indeed. for having me. Thank you, Flo. <laughs> Always great to get you back on. Thank you. All right. When what uh, what you keep them busy with? What's oh, up just oh my God! Excuse me, my phone just decided to just scream out because I hit it with my. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what the heck was I talking about? Yes, hi. I think I'm an Android developer. At least that's what my day job is. But occasionally, I talk about Android development things at conferences and otherwise online. Um, I guess they're online conferences a lot now, but yeah. that might be changing in the future. But you can find. Most of my technical talks, including videos and code at my website, randomlytyping.com. And for just general everyday babble and other things, you can find me at Queen Code Monkey. Queen Code Monkey? Yeah, that's what it is. Queen Code Monkey. I am really thrown off this right now on Twitter and Instagram. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, and Always appreciate you. At Queen Code Monkey on Twitter. That's a long one. Yeah. It is. Here. I know that Twitter has oh like a goodness. has like Excuse a length <laughs> restriction on that's that's gotta be pushing it. Queen Code Monkey. Oh it is. Leg. It is. It, it I've run into that quite a few times. And also I've I've had to figure out cute ways of like shortening it when I've run into like screen name uh, yeah. limits. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Well, thank you. Uh what about you, Ron? Yeah, so everybody can follow me over on Twitter and on Instagram at RonXO as usual. That's where I've been for far too many years, <coughs> excuse me, to count. Um, but uh, if you keep track of what I'm doing over at Scorbit in the world of pinball, uh, followed us on social media at Scorbit Pinball on Instagram and on Twitter. We made a great announcement last week that we have had nice. over 1 million scores uh, logged on the Scorbit platform uh, since we launched. Um, the 1 million score was by a user, Clark MU22, who got it on Guns N' Roses. Um, and so it's kind of pretty amazing. I never thought that we would, ever, you know, like that's a milestone that you would never, you know, like you, it's hard to fathom that's a million cool. scores. Yeah. But yeah, very, very proud of that. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. proof positive that it's, that it's yeah. working for people, right? Indeed. That's so yeah. So, so that's it's awesome. in the Google Play Store. If you want to download it, check out the app, go play some pinball, have fun. Right Indeed. on. Good to see you, Ron. Also, very good to uh, see, well, Burke, been pretty, you know, seeing you regularly uh, recently uh, since I've returned to the studio anyways. And then now- uh, I getting never left, by the way. Right. No, Burke was here. He's he's like the OG. During, during COVID, Burke was here, still coming into the studio, making these shows happen. So I uh, can't thank you enough for that. And then now today, who walks into the studio, into the office, but Victor in person. So seeing Victor not on a screen has been really great as well. So yeah, this was fun. Yeah. Good to have you back, Victor. Good to see you, uh, Burke. And uh, you both make this show happen. So without you... Uh, folks watching and listening wouldn't watch and listen it. 
listen to it. So thank you for that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jason Howell. Also do a show uh, with Micah Sargent called Tech News Weekly. So that's twit.tv slash TNW. And we have Club Twit. For those of you who like your shows without ads, uh, just go to twit.tv slash Club Twit. It's seven bucks a month. You get no ads in your shows. You get an exclusive Twit Plus podcast feed with lots of extra content that's exclusive to Twit uh, to uh, Club Twit. And then you get a members only Discord uh, all for $7 a month. And it's just a whole lot of fun. So check it out. Go there. As for this show, we publish every Tuesday evening. Just go to twit.tv slash AAA and you can find all the ways to jump out to your podcatcher of choice or go out to YouTube and subscribe there. Or you can just use your podcatcher of choice, do a search for All About Android and you will find us, subscribe, and then you don't have to think about it. The awesomeness of All About Android delivered uh, to you every Tuesday slash Wednesday, let's say. All right, thank you so much for watching and listening. Uh, we will see you next time on all about Android. Bye, everybody. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I'm joined by Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief over at Space.com, in our new This Week in Space podcast. Every Friday, Tarek and I take a deep dive into the stories that define the new space age. What's NASA up to? When will Americans once again set foot on the moon? And how about those samples from the Perseverance rover? When are those coming home? What the heck has Elon Musk done now? In addition to all the latest and greatest in space exploration, we'll take an occasional look at bits of spaceflight history that you probably never heard of, and all with an eye towards having a good time along the way. Check us out in your favorite podcatcher.